Glad you're with us here on Under the Hood with Jonathan Hood. Coming to Chicago, kind of, uh, at the Improv in Schaumburg. Go right now as we have our conversation, chicago.improv.com. Coming to the Chicago Improv will be Gary Owen. Don't forget to go there Friday, July 13th, two shows, 8 and 10, 15. Saturday on the 14th, two shows, 7 and 9, 15. And Sunday the 15th at 7 o'clock, Gary Owen is with us here on ESPN 1000. Gary, Jonathan Hood, thanks so much for your time. Hey, thanks for having me. Gary, tell me this, man. How does it feel to be the most famous face in Ohio now that LeBron is gone? It feels good, man. It's been a, it's been a terrible, honestly, it's been a terrible couple weeks uh, to be in Ohio. You got Steve Baby Ochik just lost to Daniel Cormier. Right. Um, he's, he's an Ohio guy. LeBron left, an Ohio guy. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Reds lost two in a row to the Cubs. <laughs> the past two days, heartbreaking losses. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Bengals, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever looked forward to Andy Dalton so much in my life. <laughs> Is there any brother that you know in the history of your life that has more job security than Marvin Lewis? No, I I think he has a sex tape on Mike Brown. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no other explanation. He's got him in some compromising positions. I've just never seen that. Back. And especially when you think about, <sighs> look what the Eagles and Rams have done when they changed head coaches and completely changed the culture. It was like, you know, the talent was always there, but they just brought in new coaches and the guys started to play for them. And I'm like, ah. You know, you know it's a bad all season when our big pickup is the offensive line coach. Right. <laughs> I've never that was seen like our, like That this. was like this huge news, like, yo, we've got the Cowboys offensive line coach. <laughs> Great. Gary, I've never seen anything like this, man. I mean, after all these years, you know there's time for a change, but Marvin is still in there. It's not like he's just won one Super Bowl and he's just, you know, kind of just lingered. There's there's nothing coming out of Cincinnati, no championships, no what's going on with this? And what what do they say the, the 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 definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Right. And that's that's what we're doing right now. And I guess it I guess what it is is you know, the, obviously, Paul Brown was a genius, was an amazing head coach, amazing um, uh, scout of talent, and he was a, he was a great GM and, and for the Bengals. And then the son took over, but you just everyone can't do what their dad did. I mean, Michael Jordan's kids didn't turn out like Michael Jordan. My dad's a FedEx driver. I can't deliver a box. <laughs> right. I could never deliver packages like my dad. He was a beast. Oh, <laughs> Don't forget, so, I, it's so frustrating and I, right now I'm, I'm completely drinking the kool-aid again i'm like i think we got a shot i do <laughs> joe mixon watch out <laughs> <laughs> all you have is hope that's all you have gary right now that's all you have is hope with the Bengals. uh i don't know we'll see what happens man it's a good time to be a Bengals fan right now preseason Right. Good time. <laughs> exactly. So Gary's going to be at the Chicago Improv again over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go to ChicagoImprov.com. Gary Owen joins me, Jonathan Hood, on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN app. Um, do you still have your Bengals truck? Uh, no. That was they, We did that for the TV show, but no, I got it unwrapped once we got done. I'm back to just the regular Tahoe. <laughs> what? Didn't they have? Didn't you have uh, room in the garage to keep that thing? I had a TV show on BT called the Gary Owen Show. Sure. And two years ago, for my birthday, my wife surprised me. She wrapped my Chevy Tahoe because it was already black. She wrapped it in orange tiger stripes. So, I mean, I was a hit that season, 2016. Uh, my truck was a bigger hit than the team that year. Right. 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 <laughs> So now you just went just regular oh. Tahoe now. Nah, I'm just regular. I'm just regular driving now. We took the wrap off. I thought I, it was me. I thought I jinxed him. I'll, I'll ask you about this because um, last time we had our brief conversation, we were talking about LeBron James going to Los Angeles. So with LeBron going to L.A., I, I, don't, I just think that he was so disenchanted with – Dan Gilbert, the owner, and just the whole thing with Cleveland, he just wanted to bounce. Even even if there's no championships, he just wanted to be in L.A. Do you, do you foresee him winning any championships while he's with the Lakers? Oh, yeah. I, I, it, my prediction is they're gearing up for 2019. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think Cleveland, they, they win a little premature. 
in 2015, just because the week was so the was so weak. Um, but I think even in Cleveland, they 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 were geared up for 2016. I think the Lakers, you know, Magic and them, they're not going to sit around and wait. They're gearing up for the big free agent class 2019 because you know you got to look at Clay Thompson will be a free agent. Does he want to move on and be Batman and Robin with LeBron? That's a that's a perfect player for LeBron to play with. Spread the court, dish it out. He hits that three wide open. Um, and Demarcus Cousins, you know, he he we're going to find out if he did the smart thing or not by signing the one year deal. And if he all he's got to do is a couple good playoff games, he's going to get a max deal. If he go to L.A. next year, so there's a lot of great free agents out there. But I think the Lakers are geared up for 2019. Just my prediction. Kerry, do you remember the first time a sports figure came to one of your shows and it surprised you? Like you didn't know he was going to be in the in the club, and then you saw him front row, and you're like, "Wow, I can't believe that this guy came to my show." Oh, it's easy. Uh, Shaq, I met I met my wife through Shaq. Okay. I, uh, Shaq was played for the Lakers. He had a clothing line called Twism, stood for the world is mine, and he brought his staff out to a comedy club one night, and I went up, and they weren't there to see me, but they were there at the show. And so Shaq was sitting there, and then his staff was, and I wanted to meet him after the show, so I went out behind the comedy store in L.A., and I met him, and that's, that's also where I met my wife, and Shaq still takes credit for introducing us to this day. <laughs> that's an easy one right there. Okay. Well, um, I want to know about the process. What was it like for you sitting in that green room trying to get on BET's Comic View? What was that like for you? I didn't give it much thought. I've always just wanted to tell jokes to whoever. So, I, honestly, I didn't think nothing of it. I would have went on Telemundo if I spoke Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever the hustle is, right? Yeah, I would have, I would have went on CMT. I, I, I can care less. I just want to make people laugh. I don't care who's in the audience. Okay. So, BC was just the first one that had open auditions, and anybody could audition. And I said, all right. So, I just went. Gary Yon is going to be in Chicago, kind of. We'll be at Schaumburg. Again, chicago.improv.com. There Again, two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday, one on Sunday at 7 o'clock. Get there early. As I told Dion Cole, uh, you know, you, you got to make sure you get there early because as I stood there in my gators uh, with my wife standing there, uh, it was it took a while. So if you're there late, you're going to pay for it. So definitely get there early to see Gary Owen at the Chicago Improv uh, in Schaumburg. Um when did you first realize, Gary, that your brand of comedy resonated with black audiences? Oh, man. I don't know. You know what it was? It's just when I started, um, I couldn't get up in any of the quote-unquote mainstream rooms. But, mm -hmm. the, the you know, I could get up at um, all the black quote-unquote hood spots in San Diego. And when I first started, I wasn't even doing comedy clubs. I, was, I remember I was just trying to get on stage anywhere. So I would go to, like, karaoke bars. And instead of singing karaoke songs, I would tell jokes. Mm -hmm. And everybody knew, oh, here comes the funny dude. Uh, you know, I just, it really isn't like my jokes resonate. They resonate with everybody. It's just, you know, the black people were exposed to me early just because of BET and most of the movies I've been on have black read actors. I think the other reason why is just because. Very much like Carl Malone in Utah. Yeah, very, very much like Carmelo. It's Jones. not like Carmelo. His game is good wherever, but you know he really resonated with them jazz fans. <laughs> that's not okay. Oh, you know we're gonna go with that. Okay, cool. That's then that's what happened. Yeah, sure. Carmelo so, in comedy, baby. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. Sure. So usually, Gary, you know how we are able to have a sense of humor because it comes from. Maybe somebody in our family, someone that you saw that maybe just stumbling down drunk or just always had funny anecdotes. Who who was the funniest person in your family growing up? Uh, well, I ran away a lot. <laughs> 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 but I would I would say my my dad and my mom and dad were never together. But my my real dad is a funny dude. He's mm -hmm. a funny dude. So I would say I get my sense of humor from him. You remember anything? Yeah, he's definitely from, a funny dude. What do you remember? Is well, there there's a lot of things he said, but I can't say on the air. <laughs> you could give us there's something. There's a lot of things he said. I've, <laughs> said it, I've said it in my act before, but I can't say it on the air. Okay. All right. Uh, is there someone in comedy that you enjoy growing up? Because uh, usually it comes from comedy records or seeing something on TV. Do you remember comedians that you enjoy growing up? Two I enjoyed the most growing up was uh, Eddie Murphy and Sam Kennison. Polar Without opposites. question. Yeah. Why, why those two? 
Well, Eddie was the most popular with Delirious and Raw. And then Sam was the one we had cassette tape. We had cassette tapes, and we were driving around in my buddy's cars. And I'm like, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that about God. <laughs> <laughs> right. We just right. couldn't believe it. Like, he was doing something totally different. There was Sam Tennyson and A. Murphy, the two that resonated with me the most growing up. Gary, are you? Uh, how much are you enjoying your podcast? It's the Get Some Podcast. You can find that on Apple Music, TuneIn, or wherever you find your podcast. The Get Some Podcast. You can download that as we have our conversation here. Well, what do you? Uh, how much are you enjoying the podcast business? Oh, I love it. I didn't think I'd like it. I always thought I'm, I'm, I'm not doing no podcast, and now I'm like this. I can't wait to do it every week. It's just there's so much to talk about, and then. Um, it's fascinating that people are interested in your life. I mean, it's, it's a cool thing, but it's just, you know, I was I always feel like my podcast is I get to give my opinions on things, and then it's almost like I'm peeling back the curtain as to what's going on in my life, you know, off stage because people a lot of times they don't get that from comedians. No, the, first of all, sometimes they just say just laugh, just make me laugh, and they don't want to hear about serious issues or want to know your thoughts on politics or sports or whatever. They just want to hear people laugh. So when you have a perspective, I guess that's that's what uh, in, entices people to listen. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's something I look forward to every week. I hate it. When I'm on the road, you know, I'm always like, where, where can I go do it at? You know, I got that Yeti and on my laptop, but, it, you know, it's just a nice little outlet for me. Well, who are you mistaken for the most when people see you? Tommy from Power. <laughs> yeah. Joseph Sakura, who's a Chicago guy, by the way. He is, yes. Yep. How about how about the Miz? The Miz is an Ohio guy, and I don't get the Miz too much. I used to get Troy Aikman quite a bit, right? right. <laughs> um, and Biff from Back to the Future. Now, now Biff was over at one point, right? There was people who was into Biff from Back in the Future back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. So Biff, Tommy, and. Troy Aikman. I'm like a hybrid of those three. <laughs> Sam, but it's okay. <laughs> how how uh you told a story on the Breakfast Club, I think maybe earlier this year, maybe last year, you were talking about about how there's so much sensitivity in comedy. Um there was a, a, a show you did, was it in Florida? Was there was a wedding party and they walked out on you because they didn't like the, the type of uh comedy that you were doing? How often are you getting that? And how how sensitive are people today when you're doing a set? Oh, that's the last time I got it. <clears throat> they didn't walk out because of my jokes. They walked out because, <clears throat> one, the, 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 the club didn't have any control of the club, and they weren't really there to do see stand-up. Somebody got married Saturday. They came to the Sunday show because they happened to be on Marco Island, Florida, the, an extra day, and they just still thought they was at a party. So they kept interrupting. They interrupted the host, interrupted the feature, and then they started to interrupt me. And so I went in on them, and then they all got kicked out. Um, but that's the last time it happened. That doesn't happen a lot. That doesn't happen a lot. But the funniest was when they tried to get the crowd on their side and the crowd turned on them. Oh, my God. I can't say what they said on air, but, oh, it was so funny. Because I had to kick them out. of like, you guys got to go. When the girl goes, look, you'll be telling some funny jokes. We wouldn't be talking, right? And the whole crowd was just starting to say, like, cussing them out. You better sit your thing down, <laughs> So fast. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, that's the best when you don't have to say anything and the crowd is doing the work for you, right? Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful night actually after they left. <laughs> it was much better, right? What are your memories of Chicago? You're not you're going to be in Chicago, kind of. So, what are your mem memories of coming here? Um, memory. Uh, you know, I've, let me see. I've done numerous numerous events for the Bulls in the past. I I love the Reinsdorf. They always take care of me if me and my family want to come to a game. Mm -hmm. um, and I was I was real I was hot on the Bears when my boy played here, Brandon Marshall. That was my guy, still yeah. my guy. Um, so I got, I got you know I had a good sports memory with the um, with the Bears. I know I know there's a few guys from the White Sox reached out to me on social media, so they're going to come out to a game. But maybe they should practice more. <laughs> <laughs> I might want to tell them, you, you guys don't come to my show and stay in the batting cages for a couple of days. <laughs> come on, Gary. As a Sox fan, I will take that. I will take that right between the eyes because it, nah, it has been nah, tough. They, but they, they, were so, 
There, there's somebody. There was one of the somebody in the front office called and said some of the guys want to come out. And I said, yeah, of course I'll take care of them. And then offered me tickets to a game. And I looked at the schedule, so they do have some day games this weekend. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go to a White Sox game this weekend in between my shows. And so you know, and my son will be with me. I don't know if you know my son's doing stand up now. He is. Yeah, it's on YouTube. His his first set's on YouTube. He's pretty good. So he's going to go up a couple nights and mess around. Is he? Would you want him to open for you for any shows? Oh yeah, yeah. My goal is open for him one day. I want to have the King Griffey Senior Junior release. I know. I want him to take care of me. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Again, ChicagoImprov dot com. That's where you get your tickets. Uh, get there early at the Chicago Improv for two shows, July thirteenth. Again, eight and ten fifteen on Saturday on the fourteenth. Two shows, seven and uh, nine fifteen, and on the fifteenth on Sunday, the single show, seven o'clock. Uh, on the 15th on Sunday. Gary, I'm glad you spent some time. I did the whole interview without adding an S to your name like like most of us do. <laughs> just, just playing that, Gary man. Owens. Now, Gary, so hey, you Gary Owens, right? Is you Gary Owens? Yeah. No, so, no S. <laughs> okay. Thanks so right, much man, for coming on the weekend, show. Man, get there early. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you.